holidays are in full swing and every year my Discord community and I seek to make a holiday, holiday themed video to kind of wrap up the year. It may not be the final video for the year, but it's kind of like a you know, churning down of the processes as the year comes to an end. If you wanna join our Discord community, potentially get the streamer role and participate in things like this for yourself, head on over to discord.gg slash evilsvox and hang out with us. We got lots of rooms to talk about gaming, tech, get help with your stream, all sorts of stuff. Discord.gg slash evilsvox. My life is literally in boxes and piles as we are in the middle of moving. So I don't really have my full normal studio or setup to really make videos and so, I'm going to lean a little bit heavier on my Discord community this year, and we're going to talk about our favorite games that we played this year. The games don't have to come out this year, but they do need to be something that we played this year with justification if it didn't come out this year. So we're going to be talking about that in this video right after I tell you about our sponsor, Curiosity Stream. If you're watching this video, or any video on my channel really, that probably means that you enjoy learning. Maybe you even want to learn about learning? You can do just that with the documentary series Redesign My Brain on CuriosityStream. CuriosityStream has thousands of educational and documentary titles ready for you to binge all holiday season. If you want to dig into learning about the internet, check out How to Go Viral, an art historian's analysis of how recent cultural icons became so popular. Plus, they've partnered with Nebula, the service I work together with my fellow education creators on to produce even better and more thorough content, to sweeten the deal with a two-for-one streaming bundle. Not only that, but they've extended their holiday sale. For a limited time, you can get both the massive library of educational and documentary content on CuriosityStream, as well as all of the awesome content from us indie creators for just $11.79 per year. That's less than $1 per month. Treat yourself this holiday season and spend some of your quarantine time working out those brain muscles by heading on over to curiositystream.com slash epos and sign up to support my channel. And what better way to figure out what games of the year there are for everybody in our community than by going through my pile of boxes, my home, my all of my things and figuring out what's actually in these boxes. So for example, we found a box just right here. Let's see what's inside. It's someone's game of the year. 2020 has been a year where self-isolation has become the new normal. We can't go outside and explore like we used to. Got sick of being inside, could always go see a new place. And that's just not something we can do right now. So with that said, you would think I would be jumping at the chance to put games like Spider-Man Miles Morales or Cyberpunk on this list with their depictions of New York and Night City respectively. But it's actually another thing that I've personally wanted this last year, and that is human interaction. I miss my friends, I miss my family, and that has pushed me towards more social gaming experiences. Back in 2014, there were two competitive shooters vying for your attention, Rainbow Six Siege and Overwatch. Now I'll let you use your imagination on which group I fell into. But this year I found myself watching more esports, specifically Overwatch League, and watching it with friends. This has led me to picking the game back up, learning how to play specific classes. All the intricacies involved with playing Reinhardt, watching back Pro League matches and learning new tricks. It's given me that feeling of just one more match, and that's a feeling I haven't felt since Call of Duty 4 on Xbox 360. But most importantly, it's brought me closer to my friends, and it's done it in a way that I haven't been able to experience all year. And for that reason, my game of the year for 2020 is Overwatch. Oh, we have some present bags. Let's see what's in this one. I'm Technically Alex, and this is my pick for game of the year 2020. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 Plus 2. It is the new benchmark by which all remakes should be judged against. And I don't say that lightly. That is a huge claim, and I want to explain myself. Tony Pro Skater 1 and 2, the original games, were my childhood. They were what informed me as a teenager into the person that I would become as an adult. And they were hugely transformative and impactful on me as a kid. And so when they announced this remake, I was like, there's no way. They're gonna screw it up. They haven't made a good Tony X Pro Skater game in like eight years, bro. It's gonna be bad. I was really worried. I was really skeptical. And then I got my hands on the game and oh my God. <laughs> It ticks all the boxes. It's got the gameplay from the original games smashed together in this like perfectly hybrid package that's just like, oh, it's a it, it plays like butter, dude. And then look at this level design, dude. Like, oh my god, dude. Look at the sunset. Look at the graffiti. Look at this freaking mall level. Like, oh, it's so good looking, dude. And it's like there have been 
just incredible games that came out this year that are mind-blowing and games that we never expected to get ever like doom eternal and cyberpunk 2077 yeah it's got bugs but oh my god are you seeing this and then there's Tony X Pro Skater 1 Plus 2, and it's my game of the year pick, not just because it's incredible looking, but because it's fun to play. And this year has been such a dramatic pain in my ass. For And I'm sure that's true for you too. And yet I come back to this game and I feel happy. It brings me back to my childhood. It brings me back to the happy days of my innocent youth where I was, you know, hurting myself on my skateboard in the driveway. It, it brings me back perfectly to that. And it's not just because I'm a big fan of the franchise. It's because the game is so damn good that it makes me remember what it was like to play the originals. And I think that is a huge accomplishment and a good reason to buy it. Hello. And welcome. I'm excited to talk to you today about what my game of the year is. A game called Cyberhook. This is Cyberhook. Not only do you have an amazing hook, a double jump, you can slow down time. And when you slow down time, the range of your hook is extended, which can end up saving you in some amazing moments. I have spent so many hours just spinning around in circles. I never would have thought that the most fun I would have in 2020 would be spinning around in circles. <laughs> but it's true. If you have any interest in gyro gaming, this game is amazing and will really help you hone your gyro aiming skills. For me, this is a near therapeutic experience. This is a game that will burrow its way into your mind and it will keep you thinking about it long after you're done playing. And for the peace and joy that this game has brought me, as simple as it is, I can't deny that Cyberhook is my game of the year. And if this looked interesting to you, I hope you check it out and I hope you have fun. Thanks for your time. I will see you later. What the heck is even in this package? Let's find out. Developed by Coffee Stain Studios and released on the Steam Store in 2020, Satisfactory described itself as an open world factory building sim when in reality it's an addiction-oriented organization and production manager with a heavy side of logistics and a high chance of just one more hour syndrome. From the moment it drops you literally into the world, the resources are there for you to take them. Everything starts small and simple, a miner gathers resources, which you then send to the smelter, and that gets sent further down the line. And from those simple beginnings, it explodes. And that's the addiction factor. As your base builds bigger, the unlocks and your own creativity push the boundaries of efficiency. You look forward to just watching your base do its thing. You can spend hours just doing math to make the perfect loop of materials, conveyor belts, and machines. The world is diverse and features dangers to keep you on your toes. Animals, vegetation, and even your own creations are out to hinder you. But all those things just make you want to push harder and make better bases and supply lines. Every time you log on, there's something to work toward or rework. Your bases will eventually span the entire world. That drive to unlock the next level of items or improve productivity is something that keeps me coming back over and over. When I'm not playing, I'm thinking about a new layout or better truck and train lines I can create to help move products. It's a game that burrows itself in your mind and your free time. And for that reason, Satisfactory is my game of the year in 2020. Hey everyone, Kujo here with my 2020 game of the year, the Jackbox Party Pack 7. Now there have been a lot of really good games released this year, and a lot of older games that I've really enjoyed playing. But the reason Jackbox is on the top of my list is because of the pandemic. Since March, my family and friends have been locked in our homes because of this nastiness outside. To keep us all from going crazy, we've set up a Discord server and have been hosting game nights online for everybody to enjoy and escape for a few hours a week. 
Since not everyone has a gaming PC or the same games, we chose Jackbox because of the minimal requirements to participate. If you have a phone with internet and Discord, you've got everything you need to have fun. I stream the games on our Discord server using the Go Live feature so we can all talk to each other in the voice chat while watching the game, and everyone uses their phones or a browser to actually play the game. It's super easy, and everyone who joins us loves it. Jackbox games are perfect for online game nights for many reasons. One is the flexibility they allow. No matter how many players show up, or even if they show up later, they can hop in the audience and participate in the games and the laughs. Another great trait of Jackbox games is the entertainment value. I've played all the party packs many, many times, and they're all great. Now granted, some of them are great only because of the voice chat, but that still counts in my book. The other thing that makes them so great is their extremely low learning curve. No matter what your age, technical level, or gaming experience is, you can pick up your phone and within a few minutes, you'll have the game figured out for the most part. Even for the people that find them a bit confusing, they'll have them figured out within one or two rounds. If you find yourself going a bit crazy in 2020 and need something to mix it up and relax, I highly recommend picking up Jackbox and getting your friends and family to join you a few times a month for a great mental distraction. I'd like to end this on a note. A few months ago they released the Party Pack 7, which is excellent, but if you want to save a few bucks you can pick up any of them, even the originals, and you'll have a great time. Thanks for allowing me to share my 2020 game of the year, a game that has allowed my friends, my family, and myself to stay together in a time that we all need to stay apart. Thanks for watching, peace out. Hey everybody, Stereo Sniper here, and this is Observation. Observation is a linear narrative story where you play the part of an AI named Sam aboard a multinational space station that was damaged in some way, leaving the ship's system corrupted and the whereabouts of most of the crew unknown. The only crew member you have by your side is Emma, who serves as your guide and companion for the story. One of the main mechanics is scanning and or linking with various bits around the station and piecing together full control of it once again. Laptops, hatch controls, and power outlets provide links that let you control parts of the ship, while notes, documents, and entries on the laptops provide more information on the narrative. What I enjoyed most of all was that both Sam and the player are dropped in the situation with no knowledge of what is going on and have to piece together whatever they can through dialogue and pieces of information throughout the game. The controls are a little sluggish at times, but it almost makes it feel a little more realistic since things don't just stop moving, especially in zero gravity. Like I said, the story is very linear. There are no high stakes QTEs or butterfly effect moments that keep you on the edge of your seat. Almost every action is pointed out to you by Emma and, as far as I've seen, there's no penalty for taking too long. I know that there are people that hate games that hold your hand like that, but for those that don't mind or like games like that, observation should be at the top of your list. Hello, my name is Nick and my game of the year is Cosmo D's Tales from Off Peak City Volume 1, a jazzy, surrealist, Kafka-esque point-and-click adventure that dives into this corporatic world where nothing is as it seems. You are thrust into this world as a hired thief who becomes a pizza boy. Your job? To steal a famous saxophone that could bring down the corporation that is controlling the city. Let's get the one negative thing out of the way first. Keys and items. Any game, whether good or bad, forcing progression through searching for keys and items is not only an old and outdated mechanic, but can be frustrating for the user. Luckily, the Royal Cosmo D has crafted is interesting enough to make you want to look around out of pure curiosity. Speaking of Cosmo D's Off Peak City, it's a welcoming yet threateningly bizarre set of streets that feel straight out of Picasso's Guernica, with characters of all walks of life playing out the fear and anxiety of living in a world dominated by the mega corporation who controls the very streets it towers over. This is all, of course, on top of the more progressive talking points about corporatism, rent control, and gentrification. Cosmo D didn't just create a fascinating game that fell straight out of the late 90s, but a game that is layered with politics that feel right at home in 2020. The music, from the moment you open up the game to the moment you start laying down those pepperonis, flat out slaps. Speaking of throwing down those pepperonis, the pizza deliveries are oddly fun mechanic, allowing you to lay down some beats and create music while opening up to the characters in the bizarrely beautiful world with which they reside in. Pizza making, freeform jazz, photography, and progressive talking points makes for one of the more unforgettable indie games. Actually, scratch that games of 2020. I can't wait to see what more Cosmo D does going forward. Oh, we have a shopping bag. This is probably someone else's game of the year. Hey guys, my name is Turtle and welcome to my game of the year pick. My game of the year is Phasmophobia. The game may not look like much at first, but trust me, the game is incredibly fun. 
Phasmophobia is a 4v1 game. It's up to four human players against an AI-driven ghost as the enemy. You are tasked with gathering your equipment, finding out what kind of ghost it is, and completing several optional objectives along the way if you choose. Some things include things like getting a picture of the ghost, getting the ghost to trip motion sensors and walk through salt, and have somebody witness ghost events. The reason I like the game so much is that it's very easy to pick up and play. Once you learn the basics, the rest kind of comes naturally. Another reason is that it's pretty much endlessly replayable. Every haunt is different, every ghost is different, and the game always feels fresh and fun. The game has mostly a spooky vibe with some scares here and there, uh, but I feel like anybody should be able to enjoy the game overall, even if you're not a huge fan of horror games like Outlast. The developer is always open to feedback and has a huge list of things he wants to add to the game, including a lot of um, you know, quality of life improvements, new maps, and more customization options. All in all, I think the game is super fun, and I highly recommend grabbing some friends and playing this game with them. Definitely a game that surprised me this year. Thanks to Epos and the gang for letting me contribute to this year's Game of the Year video. Stay safe, happy holidays, and take care, guys. Deciding upon my game of 2020 has been tricky. I've played some absolutely fantastic titles. Undertale, Resident Evil 7, Detroit Become Human, Sekiro and Hades all spring to mind as possibilities. However, no game surprised me as much as the 2018 underwater survival game Subnautica. I've never really been into the survival genre, but after it was recommended to me by so many people, and seeing how dedicated the community is behind the game, I knew I had to give the game a shot. To summarize Subnautica, you start in a crashed escape pod, stranded in the ocean of an alien planet, with little more information to go by, then you're left to explore. Listen to audio logs and piece together what you have to do in this alien water world. I don't want to spoil the journey for anyone, but the game starts with this sense of fear that just doesn't relent until the late game, and although you're initially tasked with just surviving an exploration, you progress to a place where you really feel like you've made a mark on the planet and its inhabitants. What left me feeling like this is my game of the year is that the journey felt entirely mine, discovering strange, wonderful or downright terrifying marine life as you gain the ability to explore the dark depths of the ocean. It always felt compelling, and I never truly knew what was around the corner. What was hostile, friendly, or indifferent to me wasn't always immediately obvious, and as a result the world felt imaginative and alive in a way I hadn't really experienced in a game before. Although the game is from 2018, I experienced it first time this year, and I'm glad I gave it my time and patience. If it's something you've slept on before watching this, I absolutely recommend you give this game a shot. The pandemic that hit us this year in 2020 left ourselves stuck inside with many, including myself, using video games as their escape from the real world. But there was only one game that was my favorite, and it starts with... Yes, Final Fantasy VII Remake is my game of the year. After many years in development and skipping over two PlayStation generations, it is finally released on the PS4. 18 chapters worth of gameplay, which normally took about an hour or two at most of the original. When the outcome of the remake so far is completely different, as these Dementored-like creatures, called the Whispers of Faith, act like guardians of time to keep the original timeline in check. The remake is broken up into parts, with Midgar section being what we have received so far. How did they expand? A lot, actually. For example, we get a full chapter dedicated to Jessie, one of the main members of Avalanche, and her background when she lived up in the Sector 7 plate. Speaking of sectors, Sector 7 and Sector 5 slums now come with its own side missions. All the boss battles have been expanded as well, especially Airbusters, complete with its own battle theme. Nobuo Numatsu outdid yourself with the music in this one. Finally, in Shinra HQ, there is a battle arena where you can see the classic victory poses after winning. Minus Barrett's personal. Speaking of battles, combat is not the same like in the original. To me, at first, it felt like Kingdom Hearts as there are no more turn-based battles. Everything is in real time just now with ATB bars, a limit bar, and a stagger mechanic. Your weapons also have upgrade paths with one special ability per weapon should you decide to keep using the Buster Sword as an example. The Materia system is back with tons of new Materia combinations to find out. Personally, I was surprised the all Materia was gone, but it has been replaced by the Magnifying Materia. Think Cloud's Limit Break Blade Beam from the original, but in magic form. Square Enix did this remake well, and I hope the future parts are of the same caliber. Cheers to Final Fantasy VII Remake, my game of the year in 2020. <laughs> hmm, what about over here? There are lots of games, and here are any of these someone's game of the year. 
Hello there. Hi, this is Sean from MRC Tech, and choosing a game of the year is never an easy decision. However, one game stands out among the rest because of its price point, story lore, and gameplay. That game is Star Wars Squadrons. With a price point of $40 or less, Squadrons is pretty inexpensive to invest in, considering what you get for that middle-of-the-road cost. Then, a surprise to be sure, but a welcome one, Motive drops November and December DLC, which includes a new map and two new ships to celebrate the community. The story lore is another huge component of Squadrons. Treating the story as a long-form tutorial for multiplayer, Motive could have bagged it. Instead, they included current Disney canon characters such as Harrison Dula, a variety of new characters, and the potential of a connected enemy lost, Thrawn, with the addition of the newly added TIE Defender. The Squadron's gameplay experience puts it above the rest, relying heavily on nostalgia from games like TIE Fighter and X-Wing by continuing flight stick support, but also adding in new gameplay experiences using a VR headset. Playing with friends or even solo is key to this game as the matches are fast-paced, teams that communicate often win, and the more advanced fleet modes can satisfy even the grumpiest of veteran ace pilots. Add in the custom ship skins, many different weaponry and engine combos, and you have one hell of a game that you can make your own. It's time to squad up. And of course, I wanted to give my game of the year for 2020, and that is actually going to be Doom Eternal. I didn't play a lot of games this year in terms of like new games. I played some Apex, some Pokemon Sword and Shield, finally finished that up, among other things, but I didn't play a whole lot of new games. But when Doom Eternal came out, I played that from start to finish in a weekend, and I was quite happy about that fact because I don't usually get to do that with a lot of games. And I was very surprised to see that Doom Eternal did not get a whole lot of representation at the Game Awards. They it was a phenomenal game with a wonderful DLC that I've only just kind of started recently uh, that came out this year with a kick-ass soundtrack, beautiful visuals. It runs on just about anything, even in 8K, as the Linus Tech Tips video showed. And like, it's one of my favorite shooter campaigns I've ever played. So I don't know why it didn't get a whole lot of mention other than it came out like right at the start of the pandemic here in the States. And so I, I think it kind of faded from everyone's memory a little bit. But to me, I think that was the game, so just wanted to share my little bit here. So of course, super shout out to the Discord community for kicking in and participating and helping me get some content out in this very slow December as I've been moving for way longer than expected. So go check out their channels and videos and streams linked in the video description and let me know in the comments or over on Discord what you think about our game of the year picks. Is there something that we missed that you really think kind of needed mentioned? Let us know, discord.gg slash eplesvox. Come join us, come hang out, come check out with us. We'd love to chat with you as we transition to the new year and we'll be doing more kind of collaborative community stuff like this as we continue. So thank you so much for watching. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Thank you for your support over 2020. It's been a crazy year and a wild ride, but you all have supported in spades way more than expected. And I'll see you later. I'm your stream professor. My hair is a completely disaster and I'm just embracing it until it's safe to get a haircut again. I have no shame. Well, here's someone's game of the year. It's Oil Official Book of Games Solitaire. It's Slot City. It's Papyrus NASCAR Racing. That's in poor shape.